Hey guys, we get asked all the time about how to defend yourself against a knife. The knife is the hardest weapon to defend yourself against. We're gonna show you our favorite method of safely training knife defense. That's gonna be using a washable marker. Now, if you wanna fully commit, you can go with a Sharpie, but that's gonna stay on your skin for several days, anywhere from about three to five days. But we like washable markers. You need a washable marker and a shirt you don't mind getting marked up. So the very first thing, if I pull a knife out on Jada, okay, and she has a room, the very first thing she's going to do is run away. We're not gonna fight the knife unless you absolutely, absolutely have to. So really we're looking at two methods that we like to use for knife defense. Uh, the first one is so she, keeping her distance and staying back so she's outside of that range of the blade and just kind of parrying and smacking down until she can either get away or hit me, one or the other. Okay, and the second is kind of getting inside and controlling that entire limb. If you play this middle ground here and she gets control and she is trying to control at distance, this doesn't work well at all because it's not hard at all to do something like just smack that hand off. So you want to avoid that middle ground of trying to control at distance at all costs. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a couple of these drills before we actually uncap the marker. As I'm right here, I can stab, I can slash, I can do whatever I want to, and she's just gonna try to keep the distance and smacking the hand down and here, so we're here, we're just kind of training this at first, just like that. Then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take the cap off. Now in this situation, we have to go ahead and accept the fact that more than likely, if a knife comes out, you're going to get cut. I don't care how much training you have, if you think you're gonna be in a knife encounter and not get cut, then you're probably fooling yourself. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and uncap the marker and we're gonna go live with this drill. So, and this time, I am really gonna be trying to stab her, I'm really gonna be trying to cut her, uh, whatever. So I fully expect at least once or twice to get her, okay? But again, that does not mean for her that it's over and done with, okay? All right, so now we're gonna look at, see where she is. So she got a couple grazing shots. They were not good. You will see the difference between a really good shot and a grazing shot. Here, grazing shot there, there, and there. And let's check her arms. All right, so it looks like she just, we just got her in these three areas. They weren't very deep strikes. So honestly, she did a really good job at kind of keeping that distance. And at some point in time, there's a very good chance that she would have been able to find a time to run away. Now we're gonna look at the next method of closing that distance, moving inside and controlling a limb. So for this one, she would want to come in and get my arm, okay, slide all the way in and connect that all the way up to her body. And that way, as I'm trying to pull this, I'm pulling her entire body. And my best chance is to try to reach around and get the knife that way but a lot of people are not even gonna think about that in the moment. But even if they do, you see she can just continue to move me and make it a lot harder for me to do so. So we'll do a couple practice rounds. Same thing with this, I can stab, I can slash, whatever. All right, so you see that she had to readjust a couple times, that's perfectly fine and normal when you are actually doing something completely live like this. All right, now we're gonna take this one live. I'm gonna have the blue marker this time so we can tell the difference between these strikes and the last drill. And you just kind of continue that method on. Now, we look at her on this time. I kind of doubled up, I hit the same spot right there. I got her hip over here and then got one on her hand. So none of these have the look of being fatal. These things are, everything looks honestly pretty good. I, again, we expect to be cut some. If you're doing this with a partner and you don't see something, then they're probably not trying hard enough or the skill level is vastly different. So this kind of shows two of the methods that we like the best. Before we move on even further, uh, I'd like to point out that Jada actually has about six years of training. So, you know, this, comes with time you know this is these are movements that she is very very used to so if you are just getting started with this uh, expect probably to be marked up a little more but now we get 
all the time we get comments, well, well, that's why I carry a gun. Well, that's, you know, all of these type things. So we want to look about a knife versus a gun really close in like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the marker and I'm gonna sit right here. We have a cert training pistol that Jada is gonna be using. So if you're not familiar with it, this is a cert training pistol that shoots a laser. So if she shoots me, she can see the laser on there. So the trigger pull is great. It is very similar to an actual trigger pull of an actual pistol. Uh, and they have several different models. And just to be honest with you, if you guys go to certpistol.com, that's S-I-R-T pistol.com, uh, use your coupon code Impact Defense, you get 10% off of anything there. So moving on, she's gonna tuck that like she was concealed carrying. Remember, she has to be able to get to that gun. If we're starting off in this kind of a distance, the whole saying about never bring a knife to a gunfight, well, if nobody knows there's going to be a gunfight, then that might make a difference. If we're here, what's gonna happen is we're gonna talk, I am going to reach down and pull this out, uncap it and attack her. She has to clear and try to shoot me. Okay, we're gonna set this up. If we're here, she wants to make sure both of her hands are up because we're arguing. If I decide to take a sucker punch and try to hit, hit her, she needs her arms to be able to block her head. Okay, but she doesn't know what's gonna happen. If we're here and I am running my mouth and we are just really arguing and everything and then all of a sudden I go for this. Now, she ended up getting some shots off. Would she have actually gotten those shots off if it was an actual knife? I'm not sure, we don't know, but what we know is she got stabbed over here. She got stabbed multiple times in the stomach and you know, around, got cut on the arm. This time she got cut more than any other time, which is why my normal suggestion is to address that knife first. She took a lot more damage here, here, a couple places on the arm. She took a lot more damage with that one than she did any of the others. Now we're going to do that same experiment again. This time we're going to have another color. So we know the difference between each one of them, but she's going to try to address the knife, create space and then pull the gun to explain how this one's going to work. Cause it may get slightly chaotic and we can't take live drills and always guarantee that they're going to happen exactly where we need them to happen. I'm going to draw the marker out. I'm going to uncap it and I'm going to start and go for strikes. She gets to choose whatever method she wants. If she wants to collapse in and, and try to control, she can do that. If she wants to uh, stay on the outside and smack it down and create the distance, she can do that. Her goal is to be able to get to that gun or get away. That's it. All the while taking as little damage as possible. Arguing again, we don't know what's going on, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I know I got her, but I do not believe in any way it was as much. Okay, so let's look at it. I got one stab right here, okay? And that's because she was dressing that knife as she's backing up and drawing. That made a huge difference as opposed to just going for the gun. As you see, orange was just going for the gun. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times I hit her by just going for the gun. When she was backing up, keeping that distance, smacking the arm and drawing with the other hand, then one time. What does that tell us? If you're gonna carry a gun for self-defense, you need to practice on one hand draws from concealed. Okay, that is something that is very, very necessary if you're going to be carrying a, a concealed carry handgun. But when knife defense, keep your distance or move in close. I'm sure that there are lots of people out there that's gonna have lots of opinions about this. These are, this is what we learn from our own experience and our own training. It is important to note that there are lots of knife defense techniques out there um, and also knife to gun defense. Whatever techniques that you do or whatever techniques you like, just make sure that you test them with pressure, someone actually trying to bring in, and a marker is a really great way to do that, um, and see how much damage your techniques can actually stop. This is a great tool to see if the knowledge database that you have been building is really applicable in actual situations. These are just techni the techniques that we've found work best for us. There are other techniques out there that work too. No one was harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. See you guys. Bye.